and fantasy stories, many worlds, even ones that are unique and creative, are showcased in very similar ways. Many of them are built using words, phrases, and ways of thinking that we, the viewers, are already familiar with. Even if the way the characters speak or the way things are described aren't exactly how things would be expressed in our modern vernacular, it isn't difficult to grasp. Actually, some fantasy fans probably expect, if not prefer, things to be written more like the King James Bible than a young adult novel. This approach is able to strike a good balance between the familiar and the unfamiliar. The way people are speaking may be different, but their words generally mean the same thing. Fuyumi Ono took a different and somewhat controversial approach to building the world of the Twelve Kingdoms, and that's what we'll be covering today. The differences between the methods of world building that I'm talking about really comes down to severity. How much does the language of the fictional world differ from the language of the real one? The approach that I was talking about in the introduction falls on the low end of the scale, meaning that there's very little difference between the languages of their worlds and our own. That being said, every world is going to have its own terminology, especially if the author is introducing new, original elements that aren't present in our or another author's world. And cities, countries, and continents will generally have original names. But for the most part, you'll immediately understand what each word that you read means. However, the higher you go on the severity scale, the greater the language differences between our world and the fictional one becomes. In the Twelve Kingdoms, viewers are thrown into a brand new world that is completely different from our own. Not just in the obvious ways, like the location, shapes of continents, and being able to talk to rodents, but in societal structure and everyday terminology. The Twelve Kingdoms is on the higher side of the scale. Even if most of the language that's spoken is easy enough for anyone to understand, there's enough of a difference for viewers to feel lost, especially early on. It doesn't matter if you understand most of the words being spoken if the ones that you miss are the most important. Authors can avoid this issue entirely by making the meanings of the words immediately accessible, by using context or exposition. If a term is used by a specific person, in a specific instance, at a specific time, it's easy enough for someone to determine what it means. Alternatively, you can just have one character explain what that word means to another character. Fuyumi Ono decided to do neither of those things, at least in the very beginning. And that's what makes the Twelve Kingdoms approach to world building different. As I mentioned a little bit ago, in the Twelve Kingdoms you're thrown right into the action fairly early on. As soon as Yoko is transported from Japan to the worlds of the Twelve Kingdoms, a switch is flipped. When characters are conversing with one another, they're talking about things that don't exist on Earth using words that also don't exist on Earth. When you hear terms like Shoko, Kirin, Taiho, Shuko, and Kaikiku thrown around, you feel lost. These keywords are the most important elements of the conversations that are taking place, and you have no idea what they mean. You're also trying to keep the names of characters, countries, and cities straight in your mind. It can be an overwhelming amount of information to process while still trying to enjoy the story. These are just casual, everyday conversations between two normal citizens of this new world, so there isn't a lot of context for you to infer the meanings of these words from. Yoko is also a strange girl in a strange land. While she isn't completely alone, her initial companions aren't exactly familiar with this new world either. So there isn't anyone around to explain how this world works or what all these new words mean. The viewer is left to wander in the dark trying to piece things together as the story progresses. And that is why this approach to world building is considered controversial. It alienates the viewer. Regardless of whether or not it's intentional, that may not matter to someone who's just trying to enjoy the story. If a viewer finds its experience to be too frustrating, they may just stop watching it entirely, even if it all does eventually come together. Because of this, many people would argue that alienating the viewer is never a good thing. Any frustrations viewers experience early on in their story should be quickly followed by some sort of payoff whether that be an explanation of previously confusing events, or some sort of resolution to a problem that they may not have been expecting. I think that there's a good reason why people are so against this approach to storytelling, and that's because it's hard to do well. If you take the time for someone to explain each and every term to the viewer, the pacing of the story will suffer because it's bogged down by lengthy segments of exposition. Having the viewer naturally come to understand the meaning of new terminology is probably the best approach, but that's not exactly easy to do. Subtly framing conversations in a way that provides just enough context for the viewer to grasp the concept without just turning into exposition is difficult and time consuming, especially if you have lots of new terminology to teach, meaning that you have to continue to create those situations while maintaining a consistent level of quality over the course of an entire series. And even then, there will probably be sections of the story where the viewer is still left in the dark as they're trying to piece things together. So, with all of those challenges, how does the Twelve Kingdoms manage to succeed in world building while alienating the viewer? The answer is simple, the series' protagonist, Yoko Nakajima. In her role as the protagonist, Yoko performs two equally important duties. She serves as the anchor for the story of the series as a whole, and acts as a point of reference for the viewer's experience. In other stories that use a similar approach to world building, the viewer is left on an island. They have to figure everything out on their own. In the Twelve Kingdoms, Yoko is experiencing the same alienation that the viewer is. She, like you, has no knowledge of this world. Everything that's new and unfamiliar 
unfamiliar to you is new and unfamiliar to her. She's also trying to understand how the world works, what all these strange words mean, and what this place is even called. By having Yoko experience the same things as the viewer, Fuyumi Ono achieves three things. The viewer feels less alienated, the viewer instantly has a way to relate to Yoko as a character, and it provides her with freedom to weave in exposition naturally. Because there's someone else going through the same things that you are, it helps to soften the feelings of alienation that comes with all of these new terms and phrases. The main character of the series is just as lost and confused as you are, and even more so in some respects. She's asking some of the questions that you would ask, and she's frustrated when she doesn't understand something. While it doesn't make you feel any less confused, it does show you that it's okay, perfectly natural even. And that could provide you with enough of a reason to stick around, even if you don't understand everything. This also makes Yoko much more relatable. During the first bunch of episodes, Yoko isn't exactly the most likable and charismatic lead. She actually can be quite frustrating to watch at times. But because you have this shared sense of confusion, you're able to empathize with her to some degree. Even if you don't like how she behaves and disagree with the decisions that she makes, you can see how someone in her position may act that way. She's young, confused, practically alone, and in a world that's completely foreign to her. Even if her actions are initially frustrating, this shared experience that you have with her serves as a base to build her character off of. And later on, you can see how much she's grown from the scared girl that you see now. Lastly, it provides Fuyumi Ono with a natural way to convey exposition through the story. Since Yoko knows nothing about the world that she's in, it's completely natural for her to ask questions, and it's also natural for the people who she meets, who can obviously tell that she's not from the area, to offer small bits of information to her, even if they're what would be considered common knowledge. This allows Ono to write exposition in a way that doesn't have a large effect on the show's pacing. It just blends in naturally with the story she's already weaving. This also provides a payoff for the viewer, who may not have been able to figure out all the new words yet. Once they understand what some of the basic terminology means, things begin to click. Concepts about the world that were previously murky suddenly become more clear and the viewer can instantly gain a better understanding of what they're seeing. Eventually, as terms are introduced, used, and reused, viewers will be able to infer their meanings. It creates a sense of discovery as you learn more and more about this new world. With context, time, and small bits of exposition scattered throughout the series, suddenly there aren't many words that you don't understand. You're able to listen to entire conversations that are riddled with previously foreign terms, and come away from it without any questions. It feels like you've learned a new language, and it only strengthens your connection to the Twelve Kingdoms. There are several things that make the world of the Twelve Kingdoms interesting. It's unique, mystical, and filled with interesting stories and characters. But its language, the terminology that it uses, is a large part of why it's so immersive. Learning these new words helps to foster stronger connections, both to the series' main character and the world that she now resides in. This is why the world building of the Twelve Kingdoms works. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, please like the video, and subscribe if you like learning about all things related to anime. If you can think of anyone who would enjoy this video, please share it with them. I'd appreciate it. Once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.